How many people know the name Alex Murdoch? He's not coming out right now. But the man that plays him in the new Lifetime movie, and I have practiced saying this because this is like, say this five times fast. Murdoch Murders the Movie is here today with us. Uh, uh, such a career he's had from Casper, Ruthless People, While You Were Sleeping, The Accidental Tourist, Lost Highway, Wyatt Earp, Spaceballs, Independence Day, so many others. Please welcome Bill Pullman. <laughs> All right. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for coming out today, Bill, and to talk about this. And I was telling you backstage, if I was a casting person, I would not have thought of Bill Pullman to play this guy because I've seen him every day on the news for like two years. He was on every morning. They want to figure out a new story to tell about it. Alex. And you are astonishing. What a transformation in this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I think I was the last person on earth that hadn't heard of him. Can you, you had not heard that? Of oh my God. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasted like two or three days not wanting to read it. I heard this is about a guy who killed his wife and yeah. son, and I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't want people getting ideas about me over in my house. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, then I read the script, and I really uh, saw a lot of it was taken from the, you know, all the coverage. It struck me that script was amazing because nowadays you can, uh, you know, this was one of the states, South Carolina, that allows video in the courtroom. So. Hours and hours of behavior right. that you got there. They got that 911 call that you can hear. You got the body cam of the first officer arriving on the scene, the dash cam that was in the car for the night, the first night, and three nights later. And, you know, and then the courtroom. And I only had like six more days to get ready to start shooting because wow. it's a last minute thing. So I wasted two days and then I. Really, you know, and then like deep dived in uh, YouTube. Well, if you're going to play a guy who murdered his wife and son, this is the time to do it. The age of social media and cameras on at every moment. There's so much for an actor. Before we talk about all of that, though, this is Bill Pullman as Alex Murdoch. Take a look. Why haven't the charges been dropped? You know every judge and lawyer in this state. That's not how it works. Since when? No, I, look. Alec! Look here. What is that? Tell me what that is, boy. Alec, stop! Tell me what that is. It's your great granddaddy. No! What is that? Huh. I, I don't know then. Your great granddaddy's been dead for 80 years, huh? What lives on is legacy. Hmm? You know what that word means? Yes. What does it mean, Paul? Tell me. What someone leaves to their family. What did he leave to us? What did he leave to us? I don't know what you want me to say. That's enough. He left us. Opportunity to create our own legacy. And my grandfather, he built on that, on that. And my father built on that. And I built, I built a mountain from what I was given. And now it's all going to you and Buster. Huh? And what have you done with it, son? Huh? What is your legacy? Besides a dead girl and our financial wounds? Huh? Stop! I am not finished. Talk to me. Talk to me. My friend, huh? I didn't, I didn't mean for it to happen. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Oh, the real hurt you caused that night hasn't even yet been felt. Huh? <gasps> what was 
appreciate and embarrassed of you. Get out of my sight. Wow. I don't suppose. One of my good days. That was. <laughs> How do you prepare to do a scene like that? How do you, what do you have to get in your head to do that and become this guy? Uh. Whoa. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I think uh, some of it was, uh, uh, if you see the whole movie, you know, it, this is kind of late in the game. And it's a two-part movie, actually. It's a two-part movie, yeah, so, you know, it's, it starts with him great affection for his son, you know, and uh, spending a lot of energy to please his son and give him things and to you know, make him included. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Alex is probably a guy who's never got a lot of love from his father, yeah. you know, and I think he tried to give his son love, but then it just got in deeper and deeper, and then his son had gotten in this boat accident, and the girl was killed, and then he spent a lot of energy trying to cover up and doing everything he could to protect his son, and and then son seemed to not really be helpful in the <laughs> covering it all up, and didn't you know it just all exploded on frustration, I think, in this scene. When you play a role like this, as despicable as this guy is, um, eventually we see everything he did, and uh, he's in prison. He keeps getting years added onto his term now, too. I guess too. Um, do you have to find something, some layer there that you can see the human being and play the human being? And you, you, you sort of indicated that just now too, that his background and things that you've gone into to help you? Yeah, I think it's always finding those paradoxes uh, is important to, I think, to really go deep. You know, you gotta have a couple of truths and sometimes they're contradictory. But I, 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 I had to have a call with the director, you know, before I said yes. And I was nervous about, you know, how are we gonna do this? And so we didn't have a lot of time because it was it worked right up to the start, the drop dead date to have the SAG contract. So this is right before the strike happened? Right before the strike So it's happened. a race against time to begin with. To begin, you can't go over, it was just right, right to the day and then the next day, uh, well actually that two days before the end they postponed it and gave it one more week grace, but we did, you couldn't know that a month or two, a couple of months before, so. Wow. We had to do it fast, but I talked to Greg Beeman, is his name, and um, you know I said, yeah, you just you do good work, all that, but what do you, you know? I think that uh, Alec loved his wife and his son, and Greg said that. He said I, I think he did too. So how do you kill somebody that you love? Right. How does that happen? And you know doesn't occur to you probably for most of the time up until you do it, somebody like him did it, you know. So uh, I think that that's what allowed me to kind of get inside him and, and uh, uh, you know, because love is a great thing. Addiction is, is also a pretty nice uh, condition to be in. <laughs> to be a little high. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's oxycodone, which I, I, I've never taken it. I didn't have to do it, but I just, you know, there's that thing about it when you're, you got yourself, you know, you're flying the airplane up to a certain high, and, you know, you, you, you start to lose a little elevation, right. and then you want to up it, get back out of that turbulence that you got into, and you just bring... You know, and then you just pop a few more and you're back up and, you know, you got incredible energy. You got, you feel like you're almost like the hand of God or something sometimes, yeah. you know, you just got, and that kind of also, you know, was the way he, he rolled. He had this addiction for years and they were, and I hadn't realized, you know, you, you know, when you start, you don't have much, you, you don't have to take very much of it to get up there. But then over the years, it became like $50,000 a week. Wow. 
So you got to get the money from somewhere. You know, I think he was, you know, embezzling. And also, you know, I don't think he ever thought it was a bad thing because he was coming up for a lot of the people that he said, I can get, I can bring some money to your family. And, you know, I think he probably think, thought of himself as, you know, you know, we'll bring a lawsuit, we'll do it this way, and you'll get some money. And then if I get a little more money than what, what you know, I said I was going to take, I don't, you still got more money than what you started with when you had nothing, yeah. you know. <laughs> Does he know about this movie? You know, uh, I didn't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> if he called, I'd have to say, I'm not taking that call. You know what? <laughs> Could be rough. <laughs> Could be rough, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know you had the scripts and things, and you were against time, but a lot of this is taken directly from the real transcripts of the trial and everything. Does that help when you can go through that kind of material? You know, it, it's really interesting about your real transcripts because you realize how much uh, sociopaths and people who are, you know, have this kind of moral, cauterized morality, you know, that's just somehow burned out of any sense of guilt or anything, and you feel the way that they are moving through a sentence and if they're talking one way at the beginning of the sentence and they sense there's something better to go to, they'll just drop that sentence, go down, finish it with, and you'd start a sentence with like, they, they was a dog back there and them dogs would just bark. And you know, and that just like all, you would never write that as a writer, but having that weird, you know, suddenly one dog becomes you know, a lot of dogs and you know, it, just the, you can get a lot into the psychology by the mistakes you make in your syntax, and that's what I liked about the script. They had a lot of syntax, you know, things that aren't polished, but were guttural. And, and the physicality of it, when you've seen him and see him in different situations, the way he might change, also that I would imagine would be valuable to be able to look at. Yeah, yeah. Do you get uh, uh, there's all the uh, you know, those times where um, he's with his, uh, you know, the, he has different things. But when you go so fast, I also was aware of what I couldn't, what I couldn't figure out. Uh, you know, I'd like to, I would have liked to have had a little more time because I swear, I, I think he chewed snooze, you know, that, that, like that Copenhagen, you know, where you oh, put yeah. it inside your lip and, um, and I'd asked a couple of people that were there, and they said, oh, I don't, I don't think so, and I, everything. And then I watched, you know, like that first night, I realized all of a sudden he, you know, he's answering questions in the passenger seat on the front seat. And, you know, he was all supposed to be emotional and everything, and he knew. And then every once in a while, he just opened the door. And then he'd come back in, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> was he looking for some, you know, dead body or something? How did he do it? And nobody did, nobody reacted to it. You know, none of the, the, um, the sled people, the South Carolina uh, investigators, you know. Um, but because uh, I think there's something about that snooze pack in you, you know, this kind of good boy, it affects your voice and everything. Right, yeah, like but, that. Yeah, you know, it's a, yeah. But you couldn't do that. I didn't get that far. Yeah, I just, I, it was only about two thirds of the way through that I saw it, that I really it registered. So I missed it. Yeah. Maybe the sequel? <laughs> 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 Murdoch Murders, the one with Snooze. <laughs> uh, uh, amazing. Now, where did you shoot this? Uh, in, in the South, or where was it? Shot? In the deep heart of British Columbia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doubling for South Carolina. Doubling for South Carolina, yeah. We were uh, east of Vancouver, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of the story that dealt with Nouveau Riche, mm -hmm. and it's amazing how, you know, a lot of money spent by people without a lot of taste can look similar no matter where you are. <laughs> 
we found those places in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Um, he lost a lot of weight, it seems, uh, as it went on. Did you attempt to indicate that too, or? Well, you know, I just didn't working with the costumer because there, were, you know, we had to shoot it in like six weeks or something. It was fast, you know. So I couldn't, uh, you know, and I was already. Uh, but you know you can do a lot with costumes and makeup and you know just just not to go overboard with it but just to help help do it along you know and have a little bit of the way the pants fit you know and then later like i was always struck when he the moment that he took the stand which many people said that was a bad mistake you know he uh, but he was so certain that he could you know really talk and the jury would hear, and all you need is one, and you broke that jury, you know. So he thought, I got the, if I'm defending my life, I'm gonna be wanting to take the chair. But um, he gets up and he goes, and the camera's on his back, and you realize how tall he was and how much weight he had lost, and he's still wearing the same clothes, so his clothes got really baggy. So we did a little of that. Yeah, with costumes, that's great. Yeah. So the, as, as an actor, I talk to actors and they say when they put on the costume, suddenly that adds such layers to the character uh, that they're playing. If, if they hadn't done that before, it, it just adds more. It, yeah, and, and some of it's just stuff from Walmart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pay very much for it if, if it's a guy that's, you know, he just like wears, you know, Good old boy shirts off the shelf and stuff, you know. And uh, but that I just noticed how that gold watch was, you know, that holding him with that gold brassy thing right there. <laughs> that was a that was a good find by the prop guy. You know? <laughs> Amazing, very helpful for for the actor. Well, it's a it's a terrific performance. It's a man. When I listen to you talk about the pressure you were under to deliver it is especially impressive, you know, when you hear that you didn't have the luxury of time here. And it really is, it's scary, but it's, uh, it's powerful. <laughs>